in the SEC uh, featuring teams that you might not expect. Kentucky heads to Oxford. They're going down to the Grove to take on Ole Miss, and the Rebels are a a six-and-a-half-point favorite at home, latest line at BetUS. Total sits at 54-and-a-half, so it has passed through that key number of 55 and dropped just a touch. Uh, It opened at 55-and-a-half. Uh, Vaught-Hemingway Stadium, I would imagine, will be pretty, pretty loud for this one. It's an ESPN game. It's noon Eastern. Uh, it's It should be fantastic. Uh, looking at what happened a couple of years ago, last time they met was in 2020, Ole Miss 42, Kentucky 41. Uh, that one was an overtime. Kentucky 0-2 against the spread against Ole Miss. They've only played twice since 2011. And these are supposed to be conference opponents. <laughs> Regardless, maybe we'll get something changed with that going forward. Kentucky 4-0-1 against the spread in road games against winning teams uh, in their last five. Ole Miss 1-4 against the spread their last five at home. Now, of course, some of those numbers have been inflated, but they are 4-0 against the spread after a spread loss, which is exactly what they suffered last week against Tulsa. Uh, Looking at, at Ole Miss, they have not figured out their quarterback situation at all. They are number 108 in PPA per pass on offense, uh, only throwing the ball 35% of the time because why else would you? I mean, it, <laughs> there's no reason to throw it because they've got some incredible running backs. The running game is number eight in PPA per rush. Uh, I've got to figure out in this game whether or not the defense is legit, right? That's the biggest question. They're number nine in defensive PPA per drive. But looking at the schedule that they have played, uh, it might leave a little to be desired. Kentucky, on the other hand, they've got 326 total rushing yards through four games. That is not good. But they do get Chris Rodriguez back this week. Uh, he is now listed as or as far as the starter goes. I don't know that he will make a huge difference because I think that a lot of this has to do with their offensive line. However, it, Rodriguez is great at getting yards after contact, so he he could help with that. The offense thus far has leaned on Levis and the Virginia Tech transfer, Tavion Robinson. Uh, they have been dynamite as far as that passing game goes. Uh, I, I look at this, I, I don't have a lean one way or the other on this. I, I really want to figure out exactly what these teams are. I don't have a good data point on Ole Miss at this point, uh, but that game last week against Tulsa did scare me off of them quite a bit because if Kentucky can do some of the things that Tulsa did through the air, even with a backup quarterback, I, this could be a tricky situation for Lane Kiffin's bunch. Uh, we'll move it over to you, Parker. Uh, Kentucky is number 56 in the country with 3.7 yards per rush, but they've got the number six rushing success rate. I, I just I don't know that Ole Miss does enough here to be able to cover six and a half. This feels like a one possession game either way. Uh, How do you read it? I really do feel that Chris Rodriguez is going to be a difference maker in this game, especially I think Ole Miss's defense. Oh man, I think their pass defense is fake. I I don't think it's real. I think it's cardboard and duct tape. And I was really unhappy with what I saw against Tulsa. That being said, again, matchups matter, preparation matter. Maybe they were looking forward to Kentucky saying, we don't care about the spread. Let's do as little as possible. You know, uh, college football coaches don't care about, you know, if they win by as much as they should, whatever. They're like, hey, let's win so we can get to the next one. Maybe that's what's going on. Um, I I will say, I don't think that we're going to see a better running back matchup in the nation than Chris Rodriguez and Zach Evans. Those are those are two of the best running backs in the SEC, probably two, two of the best in the nation. So very fun rushing. Um, a little bit of different philosophy. Ole Miss rushing uh, 64.0 rush rate over expected. That's 110th uh, in the nation. So very, very run heavy, like you said, Gary. And and Kentucky is uh, 49.2. That's 42nd. So they're spending it out with Levis a little more. I wonder if that selection, if they wouldn't prefer to run it a little bit more, but haven't been able to um, smoke the running back that's taken a lot of that has uh, 4.9 yards per attempt, but uh, three, three yards of contact or three yards per contact, um, but only a long of 27. So it's getting, getting a little bit here and there, but really not explosive in the run game. I think Chris Rodriguez changes that. Um, these teams are very close to my power ratings. I have, you know, yeah, a, a Kentucky just slightly ahead of Ole Miss. A lot of that comes down to schedule adjustments. The one thing that uh, the reason I'm staying away from this is you get, you get Chris Rodriguez back. That's going to fundamentally change how Kentucky approaches offense. And Ole Miss has yet to find a passing game. I think I said last week, hey, you know, not worried about it in the non-con. Once it gets to conference play, we'll talk about it. Well, I didn't love what I saw last week. And here comes Kentucky that has a pretty scrappy defense, 22nd in EPA per pass, 54th in EPA per rush. So going to be some pressure on Ole Miss. Uh, That being said, they are explosive in the run game. Uh, uh, And so I I don't have a strong lean. I, I think that I would go 
with Ole Miss if if Chris Rodriguez is not coming back. But because of that fundamental change to Kentucky here, I'm just not sure I see a lot of value on a side. That's I, I, exam, ex, excuse me, exact same way that I feel on this. Exact same way. Uh, Kyle, you know, looking at some of these trends, uh, I, I just I don't know that there's a certain way that you can really lean in this side. Um, I, I don't feel like we know enough about Ole Miss at this point unless they've just been hiding Jackson Dart and, and waiting to make some kind of a, a statement with him through the air, right? Maybe there's something like that going on, uh, but I'm not seeing it as of right now. How do you read this one? Yeah, um, I like I like when the chat kind of guesses what we're going to take on a game. Uh, I saw somebody in the chat, Max, said that Kyle's going to take the under on this one, and I agree. I'm not going to take the under on this one, to be honest. I have ridden Ole Miss unders for a while and have had success with them. I had personally the Ole Miss under last week, and I feel really fortunate to have won that. Like, uh, Davis Brand got hurt, or Tulsa might have won the game in the second half. I mean, like yeah. – because it was a big drop off. Like, I, I don't know what was going on with Ole Miss in the second half, but I, I don't think they scored a point in the second half. And then Tulsa, you know, gets close, even though uh, Braxton was not really playing very well at all. So, uh, and, and when Parker said this is a, a match of, of two of the best running backs in the SEC, I was, I didn't know who you're going to say for Ole Miss because they have two guys that are probably about the same, right, with Judkins and Evans. So uh, you could argue that Ole Miss has like two of the three best running backs in that conference uh you know jackson dart what is he i I don't i don't know if we know i was kind of looking at jackson darts uh stats uh parker i think i'll appreciate this his a dot is 13.7 just uh crazy among quarterbacks with 70 pass attempts or more he's second in the country in in a dot so the only one bigger than that is uh caden salter from liberty who's 16.1 i mean he is just chucking it downfield uh, he's fun too. I hope he gets gets healthy here soon. Uh, Jackson Dart letting it fly, but they're really not connecting enough. I, it does keep defenses honest, and I think that's the the point of taking some shots downfield there for them. But you know, I I don't know what to do with this game, guys. I mean, I, I wish I could give you a stronger opinion. Uh, Kentucky to me, 88th toughest schedule so far this year. Pretty weak. Um, 36th in yards per play margin, Ole Miss 102nd toughest schedule, according to Sagarin, 15th in yards per play margin. The 14th ranked team is laying just about a touchdown against the seventh ranked team in the country, which does tell you quite a bit. I'm not trying to uh, diss Kentucky in any way. I actually like Kentucky's program, but, you know, they're not seventh best team in the country. Nobody with power ratings would have them rated seventh. So, you know, I, this is a uh, Ole Miss team that, Before last week, they looked like they were uh, pretty unstoppable. After last week, it's hard to be excited to lay a bunch of points with them. And like I said, I'd be worried to take the under here because Ole Miss's defense didn't look very good last week. And when you're playing Georgia Techs of the world, it's easier to look really good. Uh, Levis can throw at some. Uh, I do think Rodriguez is a really good running back. Uh, This is a interesting game that i hope we can learn a lot about both teams and i'm curious to see who the chat and the people in the comments below like for this one as well oh most certainly can, I, can I hop back in there gary yeah go real ahead quick. go ahead the the, the adot i think is a really good point because uh you know they lost jeff levy to oklahoma i almost did last year matt Crowell's adot was 8.5 and jackson darts is 13.7 um, that, that really speaks to me looking at how high their rush rate over expected is or 110th, like I said, and looking at that difference in ADOT, it does look like Lane Kiffin is, is missing that little intermediary offense. It looks like they're running on plays that last year they would have been doing an RPO and throwing, um, out, out, outright. And so there is a huge schematic difference. You know, that, that basketball on grass offense is if you give me a light box, I'm going to run. Otherwise I'm going to take a shot downfield. And it looks like there's not really a lot of that intermediate RPO stuff going on that they've kind of lost with Levy, what he's doing with Dylan Gabriel at Oklahoma right now. So uh, a pretty big, even though the rush rate is still, you know, they had a lot of, uh, three guys with hundred attempts last year or whatever. It looks like with the with Dart, they're really not able to kind of get that intermediate option passing game going, and it's really become more of an air raid where they're you know running inside zone or they're taking a shot downfield. That I think makes them way way less dimensional than they were last year. Um, and so Kentucky, you know, not a bad defensive team necessarily. I think that that a dot really tells us a lot about what Ole Miss wants to do on offense and what they're able to do on offense. Uh, most certainly, most certainly. Max, by the way, jumped in on the chat. He said both teams were looking ahead last week, right? Uh, and it's entirely possible because it's not like Kentucky lit the world on fire against Northern Illinois, right? They, I think they won by 11. They were favored by 
24, 25, whatever it was. Uh, now, don't get me wrong. Northern Illinois is a good football team. They've got a good offense, regardless of who's playing quarterback there. Uh, they have shown this year that they can actually put up points. But, yeah, it's it's entirely possible that both of these teams were looking ahead to this matchup. Remember, it is a top 15 game, and it is the first SEC game uh, for Ole Miss, the second one for Kentucky. Kentucky gets through this. Uh, the schedule looks uh, reasonable as you go throughout the, uh, the the month of October. So we uh, we shall see exactly what happens with these two, but no official play on this one. We would love for you to toss your picks into the chat. Uh, let me remind everybody, first off, the podcast. Of course, if you can't see us live, make sure that you are subscribed to the podcast, the BetUS Football Show, at any of your favorite podcast apps, and leave a nice five-star review. We have already hit 100 likes, but we would love for anybody that has not already liked the video to go ahead and hit that thumbs up. It looks like this. It's very easy to do. Click that like button for us. Uh, let's see if we can get up to uh, 150 here pretty quick. Let's uh, let's do that thing. Also, if you haven't already subscribed, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We hit 8,000. Congratulations to our team that does such a magnificent job of putting all these graphics together, uh, making sure everything's scheduled right, etc. We are just the talkers. That's what we do. We don't do any of that stuff on the back end. We, ha we don't have a clue what we're doing with that. But those guys are fantastic, and they do a magnificent job giving you guys the show every single week. So they would like for you to thank them by giving a like and a subscribe. And if you would like to get into the chat, of course, you have to subscribe to the channel. So uh, that's, a, that's a new addition. So go ahead and make, uh, make sure that you do that. Of course, like I said, jump into the chat for the Q&A. Any questions that you have, we will answer those at the end of the show, as many as we can possibly get to. Thank you